Welcome to Historic Germantown's 2020 Hall of Fame. I'm Loretta Witt, and I have the privilege of being the president of Historic Germantown. This event brings to light the best of the German Township. But what is the German Township, you say? It is the huge piece of land that was given to a small group of Mennonites and Quakers by William Penn back in 1682. Today, we think of this land as Germantown, Mount Airy, and Chestnut Hill. And my, how things have changed since the original 13 families from Krefeld, Germany, settled here in 1683. That's 337 years ago. Through its 18 historic member sites, Historic Germantown tells the stories of those 337 years. But at this event, we acknowledge history in the making. It's important to look at our recent history too. What does it teach us? Today's leaders will be just as important as those of 300 years ago. Over the last few years, through our historic Germantown Hall of Fame, we have examined closely the truly remarkable stories of the people of the German Township. Our inductees have included astronomer Derek Pitts, Grover Washington Jr., the architectural team of Denise Scott Brown and Robert Venturi, Brother Al Smith of St. Vincent's, Ralph Roberts, the founder of Comcast, and famed illustrator Jerry Pinckney. And those are just a few of the leaders who make our community and our whole world stronger. It is with great pride that historic Germantown inducts three new notable figures into the Hall of Fame who have impacted our lives and our community with their work. They are Dan Gordon, a community advocate who, when he sees a need, tries to fill it to enhance all of our lives. Barbara Bloom is the founder of the Mount Airy Learning Tree and world-renowned concert pianist, Leon Bates. Before we learn more about them, some thank yous are in order. Thank you to the host committee, the honorary committee, all our sponsors, donors, and thank you for the dedication of our selection committee. And we promised you when you registered that you would be entered into a drawing for prizes. Here is historic Germantown board member, Kathy Lee, and some friends of hers to tell us who the first winners are. Thanks, Loretta. Kathy Lee, the original, is woke and zooming to you live and in living color right here from the comfort of my own home. We have some exciting prizes to give away today, and I'm honored that I was selected to uh, participate in this along with two young ladies that I'll introduce in a moment. But we have gift certificates from local businesses to give away, uh, the Frosted Box Cake Shop, yum yum, added brewing, recordings of Leon Bates with Gershwin, and items commemorating the 19th Amendment, the women's right to vote, which is another reason why I'm honored that I have these two young ladies with me. But we also have a lot of books donated to us from uh, Temple and, and University of Pennsylvania Press via one of our lovely board members, Carol Adams. And now I am moving on to introduce you to Makaya Vessels and Valerie Bond. Please introduce yourself to me, Valerie. Hi, my name is Valerie, and I am a local in Germantown, obviously. I lived here my whole entire short life. I also go to school around here as well. And uh, yeah, I've always been interested in, you know, all the local gardens around in Germantown because there's so many of them. I live down the street from the Johnson house. Uh, so of course, I wanted to, you know, get involved and help you guys out today. Well, let me ask you this question then, Makaya. What made you uh, get involved in working at one of our uh, one of our eighteen member uh, sites like Grumblethorpe? Was it the name? Tell the truth. Well, grumble, 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 grumble. It wasn't the first reason. I'll say that. Um, hi, my name is Makaya Vessels. I um, am not a resident of Germantown, but I do love it enough that I travel to it. <laughs> Um, the, f the first reason I got there was from a Halloween party about 10 years ago, nearing. Um, and I just, I took a tour and I fell in love with the place. And uh, the next year I'd be meeting, I was there and I never really left. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow. Wow, that is absolutely a fabulous, fabulous story. Thank you so very much. Well, it's on to pulling the names. Please pull my name out. Please pull my name out, Valerie. Please, oh, please, oh, please. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, the sound of the bag shaking. Let's see here. Can we read? That? Hannah Henderson. Congrats. Hannah Henderson. <laughs> Okay, next one and Cheryl Jones. Congrats, Cheryl Jones. Wow, congratulations. Go ahead, Valerie. Shake it up a little more. And here we go. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Joan Pagini. Congrats. I'm Last impressed, one? Micaiah, that you pronounced that name. I'm totally impressed. I hope I did. <laughs> well, it, it looks that. like you did. It should be that. Okay, next one. Deep breath, deep breath. My name. No, Ted Moss. Congrats, Ted Moss, and everyone who's won. And I want to thank you young ladies for everything that you've done. And I want to thank our lovely winners and for joining us. Back to you, Dwayne. I'm Dwayne Granham, the governance chair on Historic Germantown's board of directors. This Hall of Fame event is Historic Germantown's major fundraiser and so many of you have already given generously. We thank our host committee and all our sponsors. It is still possible to give please notice the text to give banner at the bottom of your screen. Just start a new text message to the number 267-450-2885 and type HG Hall of Fame as your message. That's one word, HG Hall of Fame, and you will receive a message back with easy to follow instructions. We're grateful for all the donations, large and small. They will allow Historic Germantown to keep its staff intact in the midst of this pandemic and to continue to support all 18 member sites. Remember, 10% of funds raised at this Hall of Fame will go to our Sustaining Our Sites Fund. So pick up your phones right now to give, and thank you. Loretta has given you some very good reasons to support Historic Germantown, and our Executive Director, Twomey Forrest, will now provide even more. Thanks, Dwayne. I know that many of you are longtime friends of Historic Germantown, and I offer a very special welcome to those of you that are new and just learning about our organization. Historic Germantown is a collaboration between 18 independent cultural, natural, and historic sites that are located in Northwest Philadelphia. This consortium helps preserve and interpret these places, promote them both to our neighbors and visitors from around the world, and present a wide range of public programs, events, educational and recreational activities. Together, these sites create a dynamic, welcoming community. Last year, over 100,000 people visited these amazing places, enjoying five major community festivals and over 100 tours, lectures, exhibits, concerts, and other fun and informative offerings. We are proud to have educated over 10,000 Philadelphia school children, many through the award-winning History Hunters program. Combined, our sites employ dozens of people and leverage millions of dollars for the economy, supporting over 100 locally owned businesses and vendors. And most importantly, these places preserve histories and tell stories. Who tells these stories and how they are told are critical to our understanding of who we are as a community and as a nation. These histories are often not only informative, but challenging. The ongoing struggle for freedom and equality is interwoven throughout the history of historic Germantown. And it speaks to us directly today as we persevere to keep fighting these battles in this moment. History is living. And as we gather for this Hall of Fame program, 
we hope to contextualize that fact. Let us recognize the incredible leaders and visionaries with ties to what's called the old German township who have made this community and world a better place. This event also helps us raise funds to support our member sites, our community programs, and our consortium. So on behalf of our 18 sites, I thank you for all the support you provide as members, donors, sponsors, and advocates. Now it is my pleasure to introduce 2019 Germantown Hall of Fame member, Jerry Pinckney. We've asked Jerry to explain why histories and stories matter. Let me first start by congratulating the awardees for 2020. And, um, and then I want to just briefly touch on what history has meant to me and, and again, how that uh, played into um, storytelling because stories were served up to me quite early. My family uh, migrated from the South as well as the other families on East Earlham Street, which is right behind the historic Germantown structure and building. And um, so the families moved in, it was an all black uh, block. Uh, story played a role because there really wasn't a sense of history at that point as much as because most, most of the families wanted to forget their histories or not necessarily to put it on an, in another box uh, to store it away, to stow it away, and not to open it. My family never went south again. I always say that in so many ways, I think when they uh, packed up uh, to go north, or sometimes I like to say up south, um, they brought with them the, the southern sort of culture with them. And storytelling was a part of that. So, I, and a lot of the stories that were told um, were the stories that were rich in African-American uh, folklore. John Henry, uh, the, um, uh, the tales of Uncle Remus, but it was this sense of history came when I left Earlham Street, whether it was to go to school, uh, the barbershop and whatnot. And I always had a sort of a curious eye and I was struck by these unusual, unique buildings. And it wasn't really until after leaving the Philadelphia Museum School of Art, which is now the University of the Arts, that I was introduced through my, through my craft, through my gift, um, projects that dealt with African-American history. And um, I got a call from National Geographic magazine. And um, this is Philadelphia's native son, uh, Charles Bloxon. And he was going to write a piece on the Underground Railroad. And I was going to illustrate it. So I had not met Charles at that time. So we were going to meet together with the people from National Geographic in Philadelphia. Where did we meet? We met in Germantown. We met and I was reintroduced to those magical buildings, architectural buildings that uh, so impressed me because I knew there was some some value, something there that I needed to unlock. And there was Charles Bloxon to help me unlock it. And um, so all of the things that certainly and maybe that I had stored away uh, was all of a sudden uh, at my fingertips. Not only was these things at my fingertips, but it was my neighborhood. In other words, in so many ways, Certainly, I owned the history, um, and certainly we're descendants from, from uh, the enslaved, uh, but I owned, it was my neighborhood. Uh, it was the Johnson House, that structure that sat there, and that beautiful stone structure that I passed so often 
Now, could I possibly been walking in the same footsteps as Harriet Tubman? So history, story, all of that came together. It all made sense. And not only did it make sense in terms of what I was gathering and whatnot, I could now look at the Uncle Remus tales differently. I could look at John Henry differently. Um, they all had a different kind of meaning. And that past that my father, my mother, my grandparents didn't share, I had somewhat of an access to it. Story, history, neighborhood, community, all of it was there. And, um, and, and so to receive a call from Tuami to accept this honor from the historic Germantown, I was back home. And I don't know, I mean, there is um, a power in all the um, awardees receiving this beautiful award and recognition. And, uh, but I could visit historic Germantown and walk two blocks to where I grew up. Thank you for sharing your perspective, Jerry. We're lucky to have you as a member of the Hall of Fame. And thank you to all you generous donors who've already contributed through our text to give platform. To everyone else watching, if you're able, please make your donation now. If you're having trouble, we have staff standing by the phone at Historic Germantown to help you. That number is 215-844-1683, the founding year of Germantown. Our own Stacy Swigert is at extension 106. The text to give information is back now at the bottom of your screen. As you're doing that, let's learn about our first honoree of the evening. Dan Gordon. I first met Dan Gordon about five years ago. And, and actually, I met him in a little park that is on Germantown Avenue called Trolley Car Park. And Dan had said, let's meet there and have some tea. And I want to talk to you about your representing me. And that's how I met him, because he, he needed a lawyer. And I'm a solo practitioner. And so we started from that. But he and a friend had decided that they wanted to fund, they wanted to bring a computer program into a school. And they ended up installing a fully equipped computer room for the children at, at Emlyn. And it was so impressive that the school superintendent came to the dedication of that room. That's how I met Dan. It was to work with him on how he was managing to get that computer room put together. But then I got to know Dan and he became my friend. And, and he became someone that I, I admire and I count on in my life. If you met Dan, you wouldn't know he's a real estate developer. You really wouldn't know that. He is truly a Philadelphian and he is truly a Mount Airyite. He's truly a Germantowner. He's, he's really invested into his community. There was another program that he worked on. It was a baseball field in sort of around the Albany area. Dan found out that they didn't have a clubhouse, but he loved what these children were doing there. The parents were there. And he said, they need a place to go to the bathroom and for these children to change their clothes. And this clubhouse had a dilapidated roof and the it, so it was under Parks and Rec, but the city couldn't afford to restore the building. Dan contributed the money to restore that building. And he worked with all the contractors and all of the parents and the program director to get together to, to make certain that everybody was on board. And he, you can hear the joy that comes from Dan when he's engaged in seeing something come to life. He really digs into the things and, and, and places and programs that, that he cares about. When I look back to the years that I've known Dan, I'm thinking, how did I get so lucky to have this friend? And, and yet he makes me think that he feels lucky to have me as a friend. Historic Germantown is pretty smart. 
in knowing that how much this person deserves to be in their Hall of Fame because Dan truly deserves to be inducted and is right up there among the giants that they've inducted in the past. Dan's positive outlook and generosity is a real inspiration. What an amazing inductee into Historic Germantown's Hall of Fame. Now, I'm pleased to introduce you to Barbara Bloom, a truly remarkable asset of our German township. Back to Mount Airy Day, 1984, May the 5th, and we're interviewing the people at the Mount Airy Learning Tree. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. What's your name? My name is Barbara Bloom. I first met Barbara in about 1981. She'd been back in Philadelphia for not quite a year at that point. She was working as the executive secretary for West Mount Airy Neighbors, and she was developing a project that she had had an idea for while she was working in Kansas. And she was in Kansas at a fairly high-powered feminist uh, academic post. And she returned to Philadelphia where she had been in graduate school earlier. And she decided that she wanted to do this project and she wanted to do it in what she called her favorite neighborhood in Philadelphia. She had seen a free university in Manhattan, Kansas with the idea that anybody could teach and everybody could learn. And she looked at that, talked to people, said, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? How about doing this? Taking anybody's interest and asking them to turn it into a course. We have basketball, we have break dancing, we have computer courses, we have dancing courses, we have... The course locations were all over the Northwest. People came from lots of different places to take advantage of what's involved. So basically it has grown and grown. I'm not gonna bore you with statistics, but it's grown enormously and has many, many, many people taking courses and teaching courses every year. When she stopped doing that, she worked at Temple Ambler for a while. A little bit later on, as she retired from Temple, she realized that what she wanted to do was to go back to helping in schools. And she went to Houston School and said, do you have volunteers? Do you need volunteers? And they said, well, yeah, we need volunteers, but we don't really know what to do with them. And Barbara said, I'll help you set up a program. And they began with a program teaching fourth graders who were struggling with reading. She directed it until 2017. And again, another volunteer has taken that one over. So that program continues. At the same time as she had more time as a retired person, she got, interest, she got interested in writing a memoir of her family. So she started working on this memoir and then responded to an ad from uh, Lovett Library. The librarian there was starting a writing group. And then when the librarian dropped out, Barbara basically became the uh, mainstay person for that. And Barbara finished her memoir. The title of her memoir is Ephemeral Blooms with the idea of, you know, everything that blooms, blooms only for a short period of time. By looking for support herself, she created a support group that's been useful to lots of other people. All of these projects have drawn together an unusually diverse group of people. It's great that Barbara is being inducted into the Germantown Hall of Fame because she has made enormous contributions to the fabric of the Northwest Philadelphia community that is historic Germantown through both adult education and tutoring of children and through writing and through making connections between people. She's made a huge contribution. Barbara Bloom has given us a lasting legacy with Mount Airy Learning Tree. We're so fortunate that she has dedicated so much of her life to shared knowledge. We welcome her into the Hall of Fame. Our final inductee in our program is the incomparable pianist, Leon Bates. Let's learn about the many facets of this amazing man. I was in graduate school at Temple and I had a very good friend who saw me on the campus and grabbed me and he literally grabbed me and he said, I'm gonna take you over to hear this wonderful, wonderful musician and it's his freshman recital. I said, I'm not going to a freshman recital, are you kidding me? And he said, wait till you hear how this guy plays. And I was astounded. 
freshmen who play Rachmaninoff, and they play with a lot of power and force. And, but this guy played with such incredible sensitivity to the music and to the audience. Over the years, we saw one another at different kinds of events, at, at some parties, at, at, uh, at many concerts that I went to in which he performed. So, yeah, uh, I, I got to know him pretty well. He studied at Settlement for a number of years. He really absorbed everything that Settlement had to offer. And of course, he gave that back by helping many other students who later would go to Settlement. Settlement was actually the location that we met up at, but um, he did some digging into my background and he was interested to take me on. And for that, I am truly grateful. The way he provides information to me is as if he's my parent, but a musical parent where they have that foresight to warn you of something, to advise you in the right way, to uh, put you down the correct path. That's the best fit for you. He grew up in Germantown. He grew up in a neighborhood, different part of Philadelphia, just like the one I grew up in. And he did in his neighborhood what I did in mine. We played ball, we played music. He did all of that. I know he was a, is still a big football fan and, and was a football player. And, and the interesting thing is I know that at one point he had to decide whether he would be a football player or he would play the piano. And the world and I thank God that he picked the piano. Well, he won the Philadelphia Orchestra competition when he was a relatively young man. He played Carnegie Hall 12 times. I would, over the years, he would encounter him and he was lifting weights. Uh, he was really into weightlifting and, and cars. He raced his cars. He would always talk about the relationship, especially with kids. He would say, when you're playing music, it's like a car. You start out, it's quiet. You start the car up. You rev it up a little bit. The, the tempo changes. The pitch goes up. And then you start driving, and you have to avoid things. <laughs> and so he would translate the driving, the driving of a car, the sound of the engine, into the sound and the dynamics and so forth of music. He learned all these different kinds of music. He was a weightlifter. He played sports. He raced the car. He went to the pinnacle of classical piano, playing with orchestras all over Europe traveling the whole world. I, I was ecstatic to hear that he was being inducted into the Germantown Hall of Fame. So it really made me happy that people wanted to express their love and appreciation for this great man. He always lived in or very close to Germantown. They were his roots and he never deserted his roots. And you keep that in your heart and mind and you follow the things you love then there's almost nothing you can't accomplish. And Leon is a superb example of that path. Words alone don't do Leon Bates justice, so let's take a few moments to listen.
Just amazing. The talent, impact, and influence that has come from Germantown inspires me, and I hope that it has inspired you too. Let's visit one last time with Kathy and her group of future Hall of Famers. Oh, hello, my intrepid viewers, and welcome back for our second and final drawing for prizes for attending our historic Hall of Fame venue. Valerie and Mackay are still with me. And I guess I just have a couple more questions I'd like to ask uh, Micaiah about the Grumblethorpe Youth Programs. Would you mind sharing why you volunteer there? Yes. Um, well, the Grumblethorpe Youth Volunteer Program is a um, program that accepts kids from middle school to high school. And uh, we um, volunteer at Grumblethorpe. We have events that are all youth-led um, we have meetings and we also take care of these sites of Bumblethorpe. And how long have you been affiliated with them? Oh, well, I've been affiliated since, I believe 2011 during their Halloween party. I, um, I went there with my mom through an advertisement. I took a few tours and I love the place and the next um, you volunteer meeting, I was there and I never left. Okay, now Valerie, my question to you is if I were a first time visitor to Grumblethorpe, what would I absolutely have to see and why and what else can you share about what excites you about Grumblethorpe? If you were a first time volunteer, first time, not first time volunteer, but a first time, you know, experience at Grumblethorpe, I would definitely say the garden is probably the number one attraction, I would say. It's just crazy how you can go up and down Germantown Avenue probably every single day, all your whole life, and you would probably never see or experience the giant garden that is behind there. It's just, you know, so many vegetables that are being able to grow, uh, fruit, there's different flowers, there's a whole, you know, greenhouse that's just growing certain tomatoes and everything. It's just a whole experience really that um, I'm glad that I'm able to really be a part of. It's, it's a pleasure really. Yeah, it is. Are there any other, anything else you wanna add about Grumblethorpe that we should know and uh, how we get more people involved in it? I definitely, um, I definitely think that people who, you know, who have never really been able to experience a garden like that because I've never really been able to experience a garden like that because we live in the city, you know? It's not, it's very hard for me to grow, have a, a garden in my backyard because it's extremely tiny. So I think being able to get down and, and dirty and plant stuff and being able to experience a garden, it's a pleasure. I think it's a privilege to be able to have a place like that to experience and go to. Micaiah, last words before we pull? Yeah, uh, I would just say it's a great place for um, learning about your community, finding a family, if uh, meeting new people and good friends for life in some cases. Yeah. Nice. Okay, Valerie, let's shake that bag. Here we go. Oops. Our first one is... Annie Kaplan. Yep. And Kaplan. And our second one. Number two is. Barbara Stichert. Yep. Close enough for me. <laughs> Number, <laughs> Number three. here. Says Kathy Lee, right, right? Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Pearl Webster. Yep. Oh, lucky Pearl. <laughs> it's in the chance. name. It's just in the name. It's in the name. Pearl. Last person. We have Penny Scott Shedley. There we go. Well, congratulations to all of our winners. We're giving away books. We're giving away gift certificates to from local
local businesses and stuff on the uh, 19th Amendment. And now back to Lady Loretta. Thank you, Kathy and the Grumblethorpe Youth Volunteers. Thanks to all our honorees. Thanks to all of you who have attended this program. Thanks to all our sponsors. And thanks to all those who have helped to put this Hall of Fame event together, including producer PWP Video. And thank you to all those who stepped up to the plate to keep historic Germantown strong amidst the pandemic. We'll leave the text to give open for several more hours after this program. If you're watching a rebroadcast or if texting isn't your thing, you can always go to Historic Germantown's website, freedomsbackyard.com. We invite you to stick around and enjoy this short video that represents life at some of our sites and recognizes our sponsors and supporters. We'll see you again at the 2021 Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Goodbye, stay safe, and be well.